record. Perfect. Okay, so um, before Christmas, Tina and I laid out um, a, a 2017 schedule. So we're going to try and do these educational meetings every month. Uh, we're going to try and do them on the first Thursday of every month. For this month and next month, that's going to work. I have some conflicts going forward, which we can talk about at the end. Um, we're going to try and do them all at 1030. We will record them. So if you have something bad like Barbara having her doctor's appointment, we have something um, big like that, then you can watch them after. But we really encourage you to be on them. We're going to try and stick to we've in that advertising schedule. We've put so um, January is Breeders Breeders Choice Plus. So this whole educational program will be centered around um, getting mares pregnant. We're not going to talk about what once they're pregnant. That's next month. This will be getting mares pregnant. So we've got a few slides. I'll try and send them to you prior in PDF so you can take notes. Um, that's how we're going to go. At the end, if you've got any suggestions, questions, whatever, we can go through it then. But let's go ahead. And I will keep glancing over to see if people have questions or if, you know, you can't hear, etc. So obviously with any breeding program, the goal is the fall. With the mare, the stallion, but our goal, our end point is a healthy fall. I was talking with somebody the other day about <clears throat> kind of an adult horse, and it all comes back to the fall. If you want a good race horse, you have to have a good fall. If you want a good dressage horse, you have to have a good fall. And the mare is the first part of that because she's the one that's going to carry that fall. And if you can't get her pregnant, then um, we're a bit out of luck. So we'll talk about nutrition and reproduction, the three factors that I think are necessary for reproductive success. Now, we're only going to talk about one of those, but as we go on in months, we'll talk about the others. Optimum body condition, because it's so absolutely critical. And really, we needed to have body condition already taken care of for our thoroughbred mares, because they are already starting the breeding. Um, but we still have time if we've got other performance mares that people aren't going to breed till later on. Um, and then look at some example diets for barren mares. Again, we won't talk about pregnant mares today. So let's just look at that link between nutrition and reproduction. I'll just have everybody mute themselves just so that we don't have um, kind of typing or whatever coming into the recording. Reproduction is not a given. It's not just going to happen all the time. It's a. I always look at it like it's a bonus. It will only occur if the mare has adequate nutrition and body reserves. So if she's really thin, then whatever energy or nutrients she has, she's going to use herself to stay alive, and she is not going to reproduce. Um, so we need to make sure that they're in ideal body condition. So the reproductive cycle is centered around nutrition. It's also centered around increased day length, light, uh, temperature, the nutrient availability, and you just think about horses in the wild. Horses, animals in general, will breed in the spring. What happens in the spring? We start to get warmer temperatures, longer day length. There's also an influx in nutrition for the dam. So you may have come through a hard winter, and then we have this influx in nutrition to kind of flush that, get her, get all those reproductive signals going forward. In winter, obviously, mares will not cycle. Um, some very obese mares will, but they're not the best cycles. <clears throat> they're not sexually active. You know, they're not coming into heat during the winter. And it's a time to conserve. So these are those the three things that we need for reproductive excess, success. We need the mare to cycle. We need her to then conceive, and then we need to her to maintain a pregnancy. What we're going to talk about today is really the cycling and conceiving, what we need to do to get her in ideal body condition and nutritional health to get her to cycle properly, because if she's too fat or too thin, she won't cycle properly and she won't conceive. Uh, and later on, we'll talk about pregnancy. 
So what happens during that reproductive cycle? In a normal cycle, she's going to produce a viable egg. She'll show um, estrus or heat. She'll be receptive to breeding. Ovulation occurs, so that egg is then released. And it is accomplished with large hormonal fluctuations. Now, we don't need to really go through this slide a lot, but I think it's interesting just if you do have a lot of broodmare farms that you deal with, just so that you have a bit of an idea, you can use this as a reference point, um, just a bit of an idea of what they're talking about if, you know, they're talking about FSH, follicular, follicle stimulating hormone, or LH, and kind of what they do. So we have... Um, ovulation occurring at day zero, estrogen is stim is increased before that, and then you have LH or luteinizing hormone, and that's going to cause ovulation, and it's still a little high after ovulation, and then we have this, so the egg has been released, and we have this hole called the corpus luteum, and some, and that is building up, building up, so that then it's going to start producing progesterone. Now the goal would be that that egg got fertilized and now that CL is producing progesterone so that that progesterone will help maintain pregnancy. Now if there is no pregnancy, <clears throat> oh, can you guys see that? That's terrible. That's my husband. Um, oh gosh, sorry. Uh, if there's no pregnancy, then we want that CL to regress in a timely fashion. So there's this PGF2 alpha is going to help make that um, CL go away so that we can start the whole process again. Now, <clears throat> I go through that a little bit because when a mare is obese, <clears throat> this time here, the CL, it doesn't go away. It takes a long time for that CL to go away. So why would that be a problem? Well, if she didn't get pregnant and we want that CL to regress so that we can start the whole process again and potentially get her bred on the next cycle, well, if we're if this is going a much longer than that 16 days and we're out here, we're just losing daylight. We're losing productive time for that mare. So obesity is a big deal. So um Body condition, it we use as a replacement for body weight. Whether we're talking about performance horses or brood mares, body weight is only going to do so much for you. Because I could say, oh, my mare is 500 pounds. Okay, well, if she's a mini, she's obese. And if she's a shire, she's emaciated. So it doesn't really tell me much. But if I tell you I have a mare and she is a body condition score of eight, doesn't matter whether she's a mini or a shire, I know that mare is too fat. Um, so we're going to take a, an estimate of all these different areas. It's good for you to have an idea of how to body condition score a horse so that when you go and your client says, oh, no, my mare is fine. I don't know why she's not getting pregnant. Your breeder's choice plus is terrible. And you look at her and you say, whew, she's a three or she's a nine. Um, when they're telling you she's fine. So it's a good idea that you can, you know, what we want to do is we want to take into account over the neck, the withers, the ribs, uh, where you would do up the girth, over the flank, the tail head. Take all of those into account. Now, some of you deal more with quarter horses. Some of you deal more with warm blood. Some of you deal more with, you know, walking horses or gated horses. And you will know that each breed of horse lays down fat in different areas. Quarter horses don't typically have huge crests, but they've got big barrels and big hindquarters versus a warm blood or a thoroughbred may have a lighter through the body and the hindquarter, but may have a, quite a fat neck. Um, gated horses typically will have, we can have big necks and big hindquarters, but nothing in the middle, a very narrow barrel. So take it all into account. One, I don't even show you a picture of that, emaciated. Two, you know, still really thin. You can see the ribs. You can see all the bones poking out. Three, you see we can start to see a bit more coverage. Four, still more coverage, but you can still see, quite visibly see the ribs. Now, this may be 
peak performance condition for an endurance horse, or you may even get a, a thoroughbred off the track or a standard bed off the track in this condition. You need to put some weight on her before the breeding season. So you need time to do that. Five, I can't see any ribs, but if I touch that mare's ribs, I don't have to push really hard to find them. Six, again, a little more coverage than the five, but a five or a six is perfect. Seven, we're starting to get fatter. Eight, really fat. Now we've got big fat depots over here, over the crest, hindquarter. Nine, just, just morbidly obese. So, but there used to be an old saying, the fatter the better, fat is the best color. But just like in cows, in horses, obese mares are not ideal. They will not cycle properly. And then they'll have other issues with um, actually foaling. So a five or a six is ideal. They'll circle, they'll cycle earlier in the year. They'll have decreased services per pregnancy. So all of this is more bang for your buck. Increased number of pregnancies. Too thin. If she's a two to a four, she is too thin. Longer interovulatory periods. So when I showed you that graph, the time between ovulations is way longer than that 16 days. It can be 20 days, even longer. And we know this in women, too. Women that are too thin, there are very few marathon runners that actually cycle. Um, so decreased ovarian activity because they're going into shutdown mode. If you're too thin and you have no fat, then you are just c trying to stay alive yourself. Go back to reproduction is a luxury. It's not a given. Um, if we have that mare in a plane of gaining, then that's better than just having her at fin. So if we want to change her body condition score by one, we want to go from that four to the five. You've all seen me show these slides before. Uh, we need that 40 to 45 pound gain. So we can safely do that in 60 days by adding extra energy. Um, 90 days, obviously it's doable and we have to add less calories. Um, you've seen the, the, the chart that I show where two cups of oil for 60 days over and above what's maintaining her will get you that weight gain. So on the original set of slides that I sent you yesterday, I had, I hadn't changed these. I just right before this presentation sent you another email with an amended set of slides that do have these pictures in there. So if we want weight gain, as she's too thin, I'll go with a mixed hay or a straight alfalfa, depending on the amount of weight gain I need. Um, <clears throat> let's go with a mixed hay, at a minimum 15 pounds a day for our 1,000 pound horse. A uh, pound of oats, again, this is a minimum and you have to increase this based on the amount of weight that you need. Um, the Breeders' Choice Plus, two ounces a day. She's not pregnant. We just want to get her pregnant. And then the DAC oil, anywhere between four to 16 ounces or pumps per day. And see, everything is balanced. And we're going to, you know, we can get this up to the energy here, up to 125% of what she requires um, based on how much weight she needs to gain. But I wanted to, you to see this also to see Breeders' Choice Plus will balance the diet with hay, oats, and two ounces a day. <clears throat> if she's an ideal weight, then forget about the oil. If she doesn't need the oil, you can have Breeders' Choice Plus again at two ounces a day. Still the mixed hay um, just to help maintain. Now if she's too fat, Body condition score of eight or nine, you're going to have impaired uh, cycles. She's not going to cycle properly. Hormonal imbalances, poor rebreeding, this fetal programming issue. We know in women that are overweight when they're pregnant, they can predispose those in utero fetuses to long term disease. There are studies that have shown. Um, Males had issues with puberty um, in women that would, were obese. So you know that during pregnancy, while that mare is developing that foal in utero, that is the most flexible time. That 
that fetus is just taking on board every hormone, everything that's going on. So we need to make sure everything is perfect. Also, there's some research in cattle showing impaired oocyte quality. So the egg, the egg that needs to be fertilized, that's going to create that baby from the very beginning, we need good egg quality. There is some research to show that too fat, we have impaired oocyte quality. But really important, this impaired cycles. So this was a study done in Kentucky, looking at normal mares and obese mares, and the time between ovulations, or that luteal phase, that time where we have the CL. So in normal mares, we're around 15, 16 days for that CL. In obese mares, we're up closer to 30 days, 27 to 30 days. So the time between ovulations in a normal mare is just, say, 24, 25 days. In the obese mare, we're up 35, 36 days. So that is wasting time if you are, you know, really trying to get mares pregnant. So when do you put fat mares on a diet? During the breeding season? No, that's not the best time. You need to be proactive. If she's lack, if she is uh, a lactating and you want to rebreed her, no, that wouldn't be ideal. Immediately after the breeding season, uh, after you breed her. So if you were lucky enough to get her pregnant, but now you're concerned about her maintaining that pregnancy, no, that's not an ideal to time either. Why? Because if we have her on a downward plane of nutrition, especially during that first 30, 60 days of pregnancy, then the body thinks, wow, I'm losing weight. I'm losing condition. I need to hold on. I need to do everything I can just to maintain myself, which means getting rid of this pregnancy, which is a luxury. So when at weaning, if the mare, well, if she's a mare that's been in your brood mare program and she's got a foal at foot and you've got her pregnant, once she's weaned that foal, then our, our pregnancy is stable. We're through that first period of early embryonic loss. That's when we need to start getting her body weight under control so that when we're in the third trimester and we're bumping up her nutrition so that she is can be prepared for lactation, we're not going to have what issues with laminitis or obesity there. If she's a barren mare and she's just coming into your brood mare herd and she is never had a foal before, a maiden mare, then you need to make sure that prior to her ever seeing the stallion, you get her in ideal body condition. You will increase your chance of reproductive success immensely by having her in ideal body condition. How do you get the weight off them? Well, it's not just starving them. It's exercise as well. Well, a lot of our brood mares, we don't ride them. You know, maybe maybe faci these facilities will have a hot walker. Maybe they'll have a treadmill. Often not. Maybe they'll have a hot walker, though. Or even just if they're in the field, putting the feed bucket a completely opposite corner of the field to the water trough. You know, some forced exercise. What would be a good diet then for this mare? Okay, so still a decent quality forage because we want to get her pregnant. Um, but instead of mixed or alfalfa, let's just go back to a grass hay, a plain grass hay, less calories, oats, uh, and still the two ounces of day, a day of the Breeders' Choice Plus. Now, some of you may be noting here the slight deficiency in the iodine. I always say offer a plain white iodized salt lick or loose salt, and that will take care of that. Here you can see, because I've got her on a, a, a diet, I don't want her actually to be getting 100% of the energy. I want that to be slightly less. <clears throat> so in summary, we need to monitor body condition. Adjust the condition to maximize breeding success. Five or six is ideal. Thin mares, we at least want them gaining weight as they enter the breeding season. Fat mares need to be conditioned and decrease the body condition prior to the breeding season because if we have those on a losing uh, plane of nutrition, then that is not ideal. So we go back to the, uh, the Breeders' Choice Plus, which we're advertising this month. You've seen these slides before. We went through it when we did the training. Um, some had originally asked about the yucca 
151 milligrams of yucca per ounce. That to me is not important for getting the mares pregnant. This whole binding ammonia, that is crazy. That is not true. It was in cattle. It's not in horses. Horses don't have a rumen. Um, so Breeders' Choice Plus is ideal if you want to be getting those difficult mares uh, <coughs> pregnant. I think somebody even wrote if you could catch her well, but if you couldn't catch her, then use something else. <laughs> um, anyway, so let us go back, turn your mics on, or, okay, Andy has asked a question. What's a realistic safe time to take 100 pounds off an obese mare? 60 days for 40 pounds. I would say 120 days for 80 pounds. So it's going to take a while for 100 pounds to take realistically off a mare without getting gastric ulcers and kind of other stereotypic behaviors and colic and digestive upset because you're really uh, taking away a lot of fiber. Um, I'm going to say you're looking at 100 pounds. You're looking at 120 days. So up, up around four months, four months to take off significant amounts of weight gain. Okay. Everett asks, what are the risks of unsafely adding or taking off weight? The Amish love to rush things. Yes, they do. Now, uh, the risks of adding weight too quickly, it's not necessarily the adding of the weight too quickly. It's more what you have to do to add the weight quickly. and if you <clears throat> want to add weight more quickly, you have to feed more. So the risk is not the adding of the weight, but just I have to feed excessively more feed. Um, so every day, instead of me adding two cups of oil or five pounds of oats or whatever I'm doing, I've got to do six, seven, eight pounds additional. And so you just run the risk of digestive upset. When it comes to um, stripping weight to taking weight off it's not a, a matter of so if we go back to Andy's question it's not a matter of how safely uh we can take the weight off it's just not feasible because I don't want to starve the horse so we if we try to take the weight off too quickly we're literally having to starve them and so then we run the risk of gastric ulcers colic because we've really got them on a minimal diet. Um, uh, if you're giving a salt non-block, how much is sufficient? You know, I, if you're just giving loose salt and you want to add it to the feed and they don't have access to it, you know, a tablespoon a day, I really prefer they have ad lib access to salt, whether it's in a salt block in the stall or in the field or you've got loose salt in the stall. I, I much prefer that. Um, do CL levels factor in for thin horses? Thin horses, <clears throat> we just don't have. If we go back, go back to this slide. Da -da 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 -da. Thin horses here. So if we have thin horses, we just don't get these, uh, you will notice they don't develop um, all follicles. Um, so we'll have a lot, sometimes they won't have this spike in follicle stimulating hormone to stimulate the growth of, of, of follicles. So the hormones that are secreted by the pituitary gland and uh, other uh, parts of the brain, they just, they won't, they're not functioning in the thin mare because they're just in kind of maintain mode. So we just don't have these increase in hormones to stimulate follicles, therefore to ovulate. I'm going up the questions here. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? You can unmute yourselves.
now Suzanne is a presenter and organizer. Interesting. <clears throat> huh? It's listing you as a presenter and an organizer. I don't know why. I don't yeah, know. And it doesn't even have you listed, Tanya. Huh, weird. <clears throat> weird, weird. For whatever but, reason, the static is coming from Suzanne. It is, yeah. I'm not sure why. It sounds like it's raining in Florida. But any questions? I'm sitting in my living room. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It's stopped now. Okay. Um, I do have a question about, you know, we always talk about this being started 60 days prior. No, that's the Breeders Excel. It's the six weeks, right? Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Never mind then. No, no, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to ask, I thought this was a product that we always recommend them starting 60 days prior to them breeding if they have that <coughs> the difficult Excel, mare. The Breeders Excel is the six weeks prior and that's to make sure that we get a full cycle of semen development so that we have quality semen available. When it comes to brood mares, um, I would say... I don't think it's set in stone that you have to start this 30 to 60 days prior to pregnancy, to wanting to get her pregnant. Obviously, the earlier than that you can start, then that's ideal. But I wouldn't freak people out and say, you have to start this one 60 days. Versus the Breeders Excel, you have to, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Just out of curiosity, what breed of horse did you do the diets for? It doesn't matter. It's just a thousand pound horse. Breed of horse doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. I'm curious why you're asking that question. 